When you walk in to a Sunday morning worship gathering, what do you expect? What do you think you'll see? What do you think you'll feel? What do you think you will experience? And, and I can guarantee you that if you walk here or really if you pick any church in Yankton that you would walk into their service or I'll even just expand it, you could go to any church probably in the country or even in the world. There, there's really kind of three basic things you can kind of expect. Now, it might look different, it might sound different, it might feel different, but, but there's really kind of three common themes you'll see in every single Sunday gathering you come to. There'll be a time of prayer like we just did. There'll be some form of music, either singing or worship or like we did uh, singing on the songs like that. And then someone will get up and they'll open God's word and they'll give a message from God's word from that. So again, no matter what church you go to, those three basic elements kind of always exist. And I'll take it a step further. Those have existed in the church literally since the beginning of the church. We didn't make this up. We didn't invent this. It's just kind of always been the way it's been. And if you went to a church gathering and you missed one of those things, like we went there the whole time, we never sang a song. That was kind of weird. <laughs> or, or, or we went up there and there was no prayer. That's kind of not okay. You would feel that. You would sense that. So, so where am I going with this? Well, see, here's what I would say. I love the church. I've grown up in the church my entire life. And when I say these things, I have to be very careful with my heart to say this. I think there's a problem in our church. And I don't mean our church. I mean our culture right now, the church that we experience in the culture. And it has to do with those last two things. Here, here's where I'm going with this. The music and the message, I think there's some problems. In it, and I want to kind of unpack this for you. Here's what I mean by that. When it comes to music in a church, we always like what's familiar. We always like the songs that I know, my style of music. I've heard people say, I, I, I don't like that church because they don't play the music that I like. And, and I just want to help you with something. It's not about you. And, and, and we think that sometimes. And, and if we come to a church and maybe we sing a song, maybe it's happened here, we play a song and you're like, oh, I don't know that song. It's usually one of two responses. Okay, I'm going to maybe not sing, but I'm going to try to get the song and understand it. Or the other response is, I hate that. Stop doing that, right? That's always the two responses. But, but, but when it comes to the message, here's where I'm going with this. It's flipped, isn't it? See, when it comes to music, we like the familiar, we like what we know, we like to sing the song we know. But when it comes to the message, we always say, well, we want something different. Pastor, we want you to come up with a brand new way to, to look at the word. We want to hear something we've never heard before. We, we like to have every 52 weeks out of the year, Pastor, come up with a brand new message. And here's what I want to go with this. And here's where I'm going with this. I think we need to flip that. I think we see it backwards. Here's what I mean by that. I think when it comes to music in the church, what I think we need to do is I think we need to get okay with being unfamiliar. I think we need to, need to sing the music maybe we don't know, maybe we don't like, maybe it's not our style, because I think it's going to push up. And, and if you push back against this, let me help you with something. When you get to heaven, I guarantee you God's not going to say, so what kind of music do you like? Okay? I, I'm pretty sure in heaven there's not a contemporary worship and a traditional worship, right? When I read my Bible, it's every tongue, every tribe in one voice sing out to God. How beautiful do you think that's going to be, church? Think about that. Every type of, every type of person uh, is going to be there in heaven. See, I think we need to get used to the unfamiliar when it comes to music. But I'm going to go to the second part, and this is where I'm going with this. When it comes to the message, I think we need to get used with the familiar. See, see here's what I'm going to tell you. The message that I'm going to give here today, I've given before. If you've been part of Celebrate Church, you've heard this message probably multiple times. Some of you have been here since the beginning. You could probably stand up here and give this message, okay? And, and, and let me ask you, so you might sometime, <laughs> okay? Now, some of you are like, oh, no, I don't want to. Okay, maybe not Sunday morning, but, but here's where I'm going with this. I hope you give this message sometime when you're talking to a coworker. I, I, I hope that you give this message sometime when you're talking with your kids, even if they're adults, and you kind of walk them through this. I hope you give this message when you're talking to your neighbor, because here's what I'm going to say, church, and I can't overstate this, and I believe this is from God. I believe this is with all my heart. What we're going to talk about here today is so fundamental to what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'll take it a step further. I think it's the reason why so many people say, you know what, Sunday morning I'd rather sleep in. And the church is becoming more and more irrelevant in our society. And I believe this is the reason. And I believe with all my heart, don't miss this church. I believe God has called us in this community to live out these principles. And if we get this right, church, oh my goodness, 
It's going to change the world. Now, now you might say, okay, well, pastor, you know, could you baby preach another message? Yeah, I probably could, but, but here's what I want to push back on. While we're going through this message, if you've heard it before, <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Are you living it out? And if you're not, <laughs> that's why we're doing it again. And, and I'm just going to soften that a little bit for you because when I'm going through this and I'm preparing it, which I did, I have to ask myself, am I living it out? Because if I'm not, we need to keep coming back. We need to keep revisiting it. We need to keep going. See, this is what I'm going to say. Sunday morning, when you walk in, this should not be a place that you think you're going to sit and take and leave, and it doesn't matter. If that's what we do, church, we're wasting our time. We should close our doors and go sleep in. I don't want to pastor that church. I want to be a church where we take what God says and we live it out and we make a difference. So if you're watching online and you're still here with us, we're glad that you're joining us. If you're listening to our podcast, welcome to our brand new series called Real Friends. We're going to be talking about relationships. And I talked about how like we're very strategic here at Celebrate Church with what we've done. And and, and I'm going to kind of walk you through, if you're a guest, where we've been. And I'm going to tell you about what we're going to do and where we're going. Because if you don't know where you've been, you'll never get to where you need to go. And we're on a journey as a church where we're taking it where God wants us to go. When we first moved into this building, Easter Sunday, that seems like not that long ago, man. That was like four months ago, church. Isn't that crazy? We started out with a series called Unshakable. We walked through the life of Daniel. Again, if you're watching online, you missed that. Go back to our website. Watch that series because it's important. Because we talked about what it means to have an unshakable faith. And Daniel was unshakable when he lived in a culture that was completely anti-God. And he stood faithful no matter what. We walked through those principles. And it was strategic why we did that because we said, we need to have that first. That's the first step. We need to have that faith. We need to have that unshakable faith before we can do anything else. And we just finished the next series called Happy Days. We just wrapped it up last week. Again, if you missed it, go back and watch it. But happy days talked about joy. Because see, faith is useless without joy. I know a lot of faithful people that don't have a lot of joy. Anybody else know them, right? They, they come to church and we use the term, we said they look like they need a spiritual enema, okay? <laughs> like, you love Jesus, but you want to sit there like everything's miserable. No! We are, should be the most joyful people on planet Earth. We have the hope of the world and it's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We should walk in here on Sunday morning. It should be like a party, man. We should have joy. And if you remember in that series, we said joy is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Those things come and go. Joy is a choice that we choose to make every single day. And we decide we are going to live with joy. And so now we're in this series called Real Friends. And we're going to really unpack what it means to be in relationships. Because as I said before, I said it earlier, you're going to hear me say it a lot. I don't think we get it. I don't think we understand relationships even in the church even though we're supposed to, and we're supposed to be the models of that. And while we're doing that, and this is what I'm going to tell you, we're being strategic about this. Because after this series, we're going to start another series called The Real McCoy. It's going to start the Sunday after Labor Day. And what we're going to do in The Real McCoy is I'm going to challenge you because I'm going to push you because that's my job, all right? Again, if this is not a touchy-feely church, if you want that, I'm sorry. You're going to be mad at me. It's going to be frustrating. But I'm going to ask us to be in intentional relationships with each other. And I'm going to give you the tools. We're talking about ways that we're going to equip you to try to be in intentional relationships throughout that series. But before we get there, we've got to learn what it means to be in relationship with each other, which is why we're here today. So with that, we're going to start today walking through what it means to be a real friend. In 1995, there was a movie that came out, and it was a cultural event. It literally changed society, maybe for the better, I don't know. But the name of this movie was the movie Toy Story. How many Toy Story fans in the house? Okay, all right. Uh, Toy Story. Now, I still remember, I'll I'll, I'll save it for another day, but there's a funny story about how I actually first watched Toy Story. But uh, if you... If you don't know Toy Story, you probably live under, I don't know, uh, just the movies alone. So since 1995, there has been three sequels to the original Toy Story. We're on Toy Story 4 right now. Just the movies alone have made $3.5 billion. That's just ticket sales and movie sales. That doesn't include all the Buzz Lightyear shirts and lunch boxes. None of the merchandise is included in that number. Think of what that number would be, right? $3.5 billion dollars just in movie sales alone. And the question I ask is why? 
Whenever there's anything in culture that grabs culture like Toy Story has, literally now for almost two decades, we have to ask the question, why is it? Was it because it was groundbreaking animation? Because it was. If you remember 1995, you went to that movie, you're like, wow. <laughs> now, now you look at it, you're like, eh. But, but then it was really cool, right? Was it the groundbreaking? I don't think so. Was it, the, 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 was it a good movie? Yeah, it was a good movie. There's a lot of good movies. But it's not all movies grab our culture like Toy Story did. Was there some great acting? Tom Hanks was in it, Tim Allen, all these great actors, right? Was it because the acting was so good? I don't think so. Here's why I would contend why Toy Story has literally grabbed our culture for almost two decades. is because Toy Story cuts to the heart of what every man, woman, and child need to know. And church, don't miss this. Every single one of us want to be fully known and fully loved. Every single man, woman, and child that exists, that has ever lived, has the desire to be fully known and fully loved. And Toy Story hits on this so perfectly. And the counter to that is we all have a fear. And the fear that we have is the fear of being rejected. The fear that I'm not good enough. The fear that one day somebody is going to leave me and abandon me. If you remember the first movie, that was kind of the premise where Woody felt neglected and abandoned. Church, that's the fear that so many of us have. And if I could just get personal for a second, some of us have experienced a lifetime of rejection. Some of us have had marriages that have ended. Some of us have been fired from jobs or, or let go or, or applied for jobs and never even got an interview. Some of us have had been rejected in friendships, people that we've trusted and walked with now betray us and turn away from us and feel that rejection. And if I could just get a little personal, there's even been a lot of rejection in the church, hasn't there? Where people have felt neglected or, or abandoned by God's church. And, and again, at the heart, that just cuts right to our core. Because we want to be fully known and we want to be fully loved. We want to have those real friendships. So I'm going to teach you a saying. And again, you've heard this before. Some of you have you're, you're been part of Celebrate for a while. But I'm going to put it up here on the screen. And, and I want us to read this out loud together. Because this is the rock that we're going to stand on for the rest of this series. So let's go ahead, put that up there. And, and we're going to read this out loud together. Read it with me. I went out looking for a friend, but none could be found. I went out to be a friend and they were everywhere. I went out looking for a friend, but none could be found. I went out to be a friend, and they were everywhere. The reason why we have trouble finding friends is because we don't know what it means to be a friend. <laughs> and so throughout this series, we're gonna talk about what it means to be a real friend, because we wanna have that in our life. So how do we be a real friend? And coming back to what I was talking about about music earlier, the movie Toy Story has a song. It's a very spiritual song. It's called, You Got a Friend in Me. Everybody remember that song? Okay. Well, we're going to unpack that song together because I think it cuts to the core of what we're talking about. Well, you've got a friend in me. I'm going to be there for you no matter what. And, and to keep kind of with the kid theme, because you guys know how much I love kids, we're going we're gonna to play with some blocks today, all right? So I've got these blocks here, and in each one of these blocks, this is what I'm considering. If you've got your note sheet, you want to take this out. This is on the back side of this. It's blank. There's a reason for that. You need to write this stuff down. I'm going to give you five building blocks of what it means to be a real friend, how you can be a real friend. So here's the first one, time. The first building block of a real friendship is having time. See, the truth is lasting relationships take time. You have to be intentional with your time. There's an investment and an energy and an effort that we need to put in relationships. And if we can be honest, some people take a little bit more energy, effort, and attention. Are we being okay? <laughs> wait, wait, it takes time to do that. We live in a culture that I call a microwave culture. I love microwaves, okay? I, I love, you know, they're, they're handy to have, they're great. When you're in a hurry, you need to eat something, you need to heat it up quick, you need to eat it, you need to go on with your day. And, and, and that's not a problem, but here's what I find. If all you have is microwave food, that's not good for you, is it? <laughs> doesn't taste the best, and it's really not that healthy for you. And I would contend that our microwave friendships kind of end up being the same, don't they? They end up kind of giving you a bad taste after a while, and they're not very healthy. We want to have it quick. We want to have it there. But a lot of times we need to make sure that we're taking the time to really invest in that relationship. Ephesians 5, this is what it says. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Your time is the most important thing that you have. 
You've heard me say this before. You can always make more money. You can't make more time. Time is important. And this is a thing that I hear so often when it comes to relationships. Oh, I wish I, wish I could have these relationships. Pastor, I just don't have the time. I wish I had more time. And everybody look right here. You can't afford not to have time. We have to make the time to be intentional about those relationships. You will make time for what is important in your life. And if you don't have time for relationships, can I just say something might kind of hurt? You have the wrong priorities. And you don't have God's priorities because that's what God says is we need to be in relationship with each other. We need to make time to be in relationships with other people. And the fact of the matter is we're all going to spend our time doing something. And one of the things that I always advise people to do is it's a great thing to do is to get a calendar, <laughs> okay? Put it on your calendar. Most of us have it on our phone. Write it down and say, I'm going to be intentional. This time I'm going to spend with so-and-so and I'm going to make the time to do that. Because if you schedule it, more than likely it's going to happen. We have to be intentional about our time. And I have to do the same thing. I'm very intentional about how I spend my time and who I spend my time with. One of the people, one of the groups of people that I spend a lot of time with is pastors, because I want to grow as a pastor. I have pastors that are part of our Celebrate Network that I'm very intentional spending time with. I have pastors who are in this community that I spend time with as well. Why do I do that? Because they got nothing going on, because I got nothing going on? No, it's important. Because we need to grow, we need to learn. So who are you spending time with? How are you building those relationships intentionally? And I'm going to go back to our song, You've Got a Friend in Me. And, and there's a line that says, as the years go by, our friendship will never die. We'll both see it's our destiny. Say it with me. You've got a friend in me. Oh, that was weak, church. We're going to do this a lot, so you're going to get good at it, okay? Let's try that one more time. You've got a friend in me. Okay, good. There you go. The first building block is time. We need to have that. Here's the second building block in relationships. Trust. I had to get these big Legos so I could make them easier that way. I can't do the little ones as well. <laughs> so time and trust. The second building block of a relationship is trust. Trust is earned by being reliable, and we like reliable. When I go to my car, and I take my key, and I put my key in the ignition, there's only one outcome I want. I want that car to do what? Start. How many of you ever had it when you put the key in and there's no start? Okay, happened to me recently. That's frustrating, isn't it? Listen, when I put my key in the ignition, I just want it to start. I want it to be reliable. And let me make a point. We want the same thing in our friendships, don't we? If you give your word, if you say, I'm going to be here, you can count on me, and you don't, guess what happened? The trust goes away, doesn't it? We can't have trust when we're not being reliable. And, and, and I'm the same way. I, I've done that before, and I, I've backed out on people. I, I'm part of that too as well. But our natural tendency when that happens is we want to make excuses, don't we? Oh, I'm so sorry. I This, 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 this. Can I just be honest with you? When my car doesn't start, I don't really care why it doesn't start. I just want it to start. It's the same thing with excuses. When you make excuses, they don't really care why you didn't show up, why you didn't happen. The fact is, it didn't happen. Now, should you find out why it didn't happen? Yeah. If I, should I find out why my car didn't start? Yeah. Like, for example, my truck. I, I had an issue with my truck. It didn't start. We got it fixed. There was a reason for that. You should address those issues. But at the end of the day, you should also keep your word. And be reliable and understand that. That's what we should do. Look at Proverbs 20, chapter 20, verse 6. It says, many claim to have an unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. Every single person in friendship is looking for somebody they can trust. Do you have my back? Can I confide in you? Can I trust in you? Can I rely on you? And can I tell you the greatest enemy to trust there is an enemy to trust, and it's so dangerous and so sneaky. The greatest enemy to trust is gossip. Gossip. Now, the thing, when we talk about gossip, I usually say it this way. Nobody thinks they gossip, but yet gossip happens, so you do the math on that, okay? Everybody's like, oh, I don't gossip, but, but, but it happens, doesn't it? And here's how I define gossip. If you want to understand what, what does gossip mean, by the way, it's in the Bible, it's one of the things God hates. When you gossip, God hates that. If they're in the room, if they're not in the room and it's not positive, don't say it. If somebody is not in the room, you don't have their permission to share it, and it's negative, it is gossip. And, and let's think about it again. Nobody likes that. Not one person says, I love it when people talk bad about me. Nobody likes that. So why do we do it all the time? 
We, we do it a lot, don't we? And, and it hurts, and it's a big enemy to trust. And you know this, if you've had somebody in your life who has betrayed you in that way, who has gossiped about you, it hurts, doesn't it? it it's one of the hardest things things that happens to a relationship and a friendship. Steve Irwin, if you guys remember him, he was the crocodile hunter. I love that guy. And he had a quote that I just, I love it. He says, crocodiles are easy. They try to eat and kill you. Okay, that's kind of a weird statement, but listen to what he says. He says, people are harder. Sometimes they pretend to be your friend first. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? That's the problem with gossip is sometimes people try to be your friend first, but what they're really trying to do is eat and kill you. Now, I just want to pause here for a second and say this. If you're somebody who this really bothers, and some of us, it really bothers us. We really want people to like us. We really want people to talk good about us. You see why I'm talking about this? I'm that person, okay? We really like that. I just want to give you a piece of advice, and this has been helpful for me. People are going to talk about you. Can we just agree on that? You can't stop it. People are going to say all kinds of things about you. It's going to happen. You can't stop it. But here's what you can do. You can only give them positive things to say about you. Live your life in such a way where they have to make up stuff about you. That's not true. That's what my Bible says, right? Live your such in a way, life in such a way that you'll shine like the stars in the sky. That's how we should deal with gossip. And here's the other thing I would say, because there's some of you in this room, maybe, maybe some of you watching online, that you struggle with gossip. When we talked about anxiety a couple weeks ago, I said, we can't just say, don't be anxious, right? The Bible doesn't say, don't be anxious. The Bible says, don't be anxious, but instead pray. Okay, so when it comes to gossip, when you say, okay, I have a trouble with gossip. I, I, I talk about people. I know it's something. Pastor, what do I do? Here's what I'm going to tell you. This is groundbreaking. This is life-changing if you can do this. I call it positive gossip. Gossip about people. Keep doing it. Just talk about good things about them. Say, man, this person, I got to tell you something really cool about this person. This is, this is what they did. And you do it. And you know what happens when you do that? It actually comes back to you. It'll actually come back to that person, and it'll come back to you. They're talking good about me behind my back. How many don't like that, right? You're talking good about me behind my back? That's awesome. See how you can battle that? And then you continue to grow and build the trust, which is what we need to say. So this week, I'm going to challenge you, everyone in this room, find something positive about somebody and praise them for it, not in their presence. See if it gets back to them. <laughs> Even if you have to reach, some of you got to reach really far and say, they had such a nice shirt on yesterday. Okay, that's fine. Start there, okay? But find something and brag about them in a positive way because that helps build what? Trust. And the other thing that it does, it knows. If you tell me something, I know what stays with you. I know you're not going to stab me in the back. I know you're not going to talk bad about me. One of the things um, that we've had in this church it's been a challenge. And Elaine and I have talked about this and we worked through this. Sometimes people will come to me and share things with me as the pastor. And I just want you to know, I don't tell my wife. And it's put Elaine in some uncomfortable position sometimes because people come up to her and assume that I've told her something and she has no clue what they're talking about. And here's what I want you to know. I'm okay with that because I want you to know something. If you share it with me, it stays with me. I don't go home and tell Elaine all the horrible, awful things that's going on in your world unless you give me permission. Now, that's happened before where they said, hey, I just really need prayer. Would you share this with people so you can pray? Okay, yeah, sure. Now I'll share it with Elaine. Does that make sense? Do you see the difference there? But that's what we have to be sure we're, we're getting. We're getting that permission. Because, see, trust is a huge part of that. We need to spend time. We need to spend trust. And then we'll go back to our song, right? You've got a friend in me. I love this line. Listen to the line from the song. When the road looks rough ahead, <laughs> that ever happened? And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Just remember what your old pal said, boy. That was better, but we'll do it again. Let's remember what your old pal said, boy. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Amen. So real friendships, they take time. They take trust. Here's the third one. Empathy. A real friend is a friend who is empathetic and shows empathy towards the other person. You know, my wife said to me the other day, honey, are you even listening to me? Which I thought was a really weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> All the husbands are like, I don't get it. <laughs> How well do you really listen to what the other person is actually saying? All right, men, can I just be honest? We struggle with this. We need to make sure we're being more intentional about listening to what other people say, showing empathy. James 1.19 says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. You know what? Listening is not 
Listening is not pausing politely so I can wait until you're done talking so I can say what I actually want to say. <laughs> That's not listening, okay? That's pausing politely. Many of us do this. Really listening is really understanding the person, what they're actually trying to say, where they're coming from, where their heart is, what their fear is, what their challenges are. That is true empathy. And if I can just say this, we struggle with this. This, as, as people, this is not natural for us because we're kind of naturally self-centered people. Can we agree on that? It just happens. It's who we are. And I learned this from a guy, and I shared this story before. I had a friend named Dave, and I want to tell you about Dave. Dave was a really cool guy, and I got to know Dave. And Dave came to me one day. He said, hey, Jeff, I, I want to, let's go out and grab something to drink together, coffee or, I don't drink coffee, but we had juice or whatever. He said, yeah, that sounds good, Dave. Yeah, let's do that. So Dave and I went out, this is several years ago, and we sat down, and, you know, we were talking and stuff and had our, had our juice and met. And had a really good guy. I was like, I like that Dave guy. Dave guy's really cool. And Dave's like, hey, would you like to do this again? I'm like, yeah, actually, I would. So we met again, and same thing again. And, and I'm like, man, that Dave and I, we're, we're kind of becoming friends. Like, I, I like this Dave guy. We're spending time together. And I don't remember exactly when it happened, but uh, at some point in our conversations, we were sitting there talking. And Dave asked me a question. I'll never forget this. He said, hey, Jeff. I said, yeah, Dave what do you know about me? And I had to think. Well, I know your name's Dave. <laughs> I know where you work. I do that part. Um, I, know, I know your wife's name, I think. And, and it came very clear to me in that moment. And Dave was trying to help me with something in love because he loved me. Dave was trying to help me to say, in our relationship, we had the same focus. It was me. <laughs> See, I wasn't a friend to Dave. Dave was discipling me. I didn't realize it at the time. But, but Dave was getting to know me and being interested in me. But Dave had to help me realize something that all of us need to understand. When you're in a conversation with somebody, who's the focus? You or them. That's where empathy comes in mind. Our natural bent, and I'm no different, our natural bent is to always think about ourselves in the conversations. Talk about us. Talk about who we are. And, and, and if you want to use, I call it the Dave test in a relationship, how much do you know about this person? If you consider them their fr your friend, you should probably know a little bit thing about them, right? And if you don't, that's something we need to work on because we need to make sure we're being intentional with our empathy. And, and how we can do this is as you're in conversation with somebody, I'm going to challenge you to do this. When you're spending time with somebody, right, this week, be intentional about asking them questions about themselves. And then do this really crazy thing. Actually listen <laughs> to what they say and hear that and understand that because people, it'll happen, it happens all the time. People say, wow, that person's really awesome. They're really nice. And, and guess what? The entire time, they probably only talked about themselves. <laughs> and that's okay because you're trying to get to know them and help them grow. Do you see where I'm going with that? That's what empathy is. Empathy means I care more about you. You're the focus of the conversation, not me. And we go back to our song that I love so much. You got a friend in me. This is the song. You've got troubles. I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do. We all got troubles in our lives. Those are the things that we struggle with. And we want to share those. And church, please hear this. We should. That's the point of it. But are we doing it just about ourselves? Or are we also sharing their struggle and really making that a part of our lives? So real friendships are built on time. They're built on trust. They're built on empathy. Here's the fourth brick, acceptance. Real friendships are also built on acceptance. We are called to accept people for how they are, not how I desire them to be. I'm going to say that one more time because I think that's important. We are called to accept people how they are, not how I desire them to be. Look at what Romans says, chapter 15, verse 7. Accept one another then as Christ Jesus accepted you in order to bring praise to God. I've said it before already. All of us have a desire to be accepted. That's a natural human need that we have. And I would contend that is the thumbprint of God in your life. God created you to know him and desire to be with him and to have that relationship. And that's why rejection is so hurtful and to not be accepted is so painful. And I want to just take a moment. If you're watching online, you're in this room. I want you to think of a time when you were rejected. Maybe it was back when you were a kid and, and we were doing that, you know, we're going to choose teams and, and, and you know, you're, you're not getting picked for the team that you want to be on. Maybe it's later on in life when you were in a dating relationship and there was that guy or that girl that you were so interested in and they didn't give you the time of day, that rejection. 
Uh, maybe it happened at a job, you a job you really wanted, you didn't get, or, or a promotion you got passed over for, or, or maybe it was a marriage that ended. Uh, just think about that time. I want everybody to have that in their mind, because we all have those moments, some of us more than others, but <laughs> we, we have those moments of rejection. And, and here's what I want you to understand about that moment. At that moment, what you were being told, the message you were being given, was there's something about you that's not okay. There's something about you that's not acceptable. And therefore, I'm going to pass you over or not pick you or whatever that was. That's what that person was communicating to you. And everybody look right here. That's a lie. If you believe that in that moment, you believed a lie from the enemy. Because my God says, and my Bible says, you are created by God. You are loved by God. You are known by the God of the universe. There is nobody on this earth that has any right to deny you or reject you because my God loves you and he accepts you. That's what Romans says. We accept one another because Christ Jesus has accepted us. We are created in the image of Almighty God and so is every man, woman, and child that you will ever stand face to face with. And look at what 1 John 4.20 says. And this is for our believers who follow Jesus Christ. For whoever does not love their brother or sister, look at what it says, whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. You know what John's saying there? You can't say, I love God and reject man. It doesn't work that way. To reject a person is to reject God. And we're called to be accepting of those. And many times in relationships, relationships are built on this principle of, do you measure up? Are, are you good enough? Friendship is not a measuring stick. We don't have a, a guide to use to measure people up. Because here's the thing that, that my Bible says none of us will measure up. Because our standard is Jesus. And I fail in that every time. And while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. Therefore, we still need to love and accept everyone. Now I want to make sure I make a clear distinction here. By acceptance, I'm not saying approval. Please don't hear that. There's a difference between acceptance and approval. I accept you and I love you for who you are, but I don't approve of what you're doing right now. That's okay. Do you see the difference between those two things? I still love you and I still accept you. You're okay. We're a church that we say, welcome home. We're so glad you're here. I don't care who you are, what you've done. Welcome home. We're glad you're here. That will always be the case. But I want to tell you something from the bottom of my heart, and I love you too much to leave you there. I accept you, but I also want you to understand that God wants you to grow. And God's going to cause that growth. Not me. <laughs> okay? I still love you, but you need to make some things right. And that's what we can do. And we can accept that. I, I say it this way, too. I talk to people sometimes and I say, you know, we aren't really friends until we've survived our first fight. <laughs> Here's what I mean by that. Acceptance, some people might think acceptance when you're building this block, you might say acceptance starts down here, pastor. You should start with acceptance. And I disagree with that. That's why I put acceptance up here. Here's what I mean by that. I don't believe acceptance really happens until we really truly get to know somebody. I've had people in my life, and maybe you've had it too, where they say, oh, I'm your friend, we're, we're together, we're going to stick together, we're going to be together and do this, and, and they're no longer part of my life. And, and what I really believe with all my heart is because they don't understand this principle of acceptance. See, what acceptance means is to say, I'm going to stand beside you no matter what. Every single one of us have flaws and faults, don't we? And, and ways that we don't measure up. And true acceptance comes when you really know somebody you really love them, and you say, I know there's things that you struggle with, and I still love you. I, can I just say it this way? I'm not giving up on you, okay? Now, does that mean you might have to put some boundaries in place? Absolutely. You say, listen, maybe we can't hang out anymore, okay? That's okay to say. I still love you. I still accept you, but, but here's some boundaries we need to put up. But true acceptance, you can never say as a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm done with this person, because God doesn't do that either, does he? We need to have that acceptance and understand that. And go back to our song, You've Got a Friend in Me. Some folks might be a little bit smarter than I am. Bigger, stronger too, maybe. But none of them will ever love you the way I do, me and you. I love that song, right? Acceptance. We need to be accepted. We need to spend time, trust, empathy, and acceptance. Here's the last one. Celebration. The last building block of a real friend is to have celebration. You know, reality is it's very happy. It's very easy to be happy when something good happens to me. When something good happens to me, that's great. How many of you have ever had this happen before where you share something and you're real excited about it. This is something that's really exciting. And you tell somebody and they're not as excited as you are. <laughs> and you say, you guys say, you're not as excited as you need to be about this. 
You should be more excited for this. It happens sometimes, right? But we need to be excited for other people. And, and, and they desire to be excited. We should be excited too. Look at what 1 Corinthians says, chapter 12. There should be no division in the body, but that its part should be equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. But then don't miss the next part. If one part is honored, every part should rejoice with it. We need to celebrate with someone authentically. And if, can I just add, even if it doesn't excite you that much. <laughs> if you've had kids, you've had this happen before, right? Where your kids do something and they're super excited about it and they want to share it with you and it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> In their eyes it is. It's the same thing with God and with us. We need to celebrate. And, and I'll, I'll just say it like this too. There's a reason why I named the church Celebrate. Now, people will say, well, yeah, sure, because the parent church is celebrate. You name the church celebrate. That's not true. If you hear that, I, I want to tell you that's not true. There's churches that are planted out of the Celebrate Network that don't use the name Celebrate, uh, several of them, and, and, and they've made that decision. There's a reason why God told me to name this church Celebrate Church. And the reason is not only just to honor our parent church, but also this idea that I'm just talking about right now. We need to celebrate. When people come in that door and, and they're far from God, that's an exciting moment. That's part of celebration. It's a big deal. When there's things going on in your life, we need to celebrate that together. And, 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 and the people that should be most excited, the pe I'll say it like this, the people you should be most excited about sharing good news with are the people in this church. Because I just say this, we do a great job of that. We're excited for you. We want to celebrate that. We want to, we want to rejoice with you. Because that's what, friend, amen. Thank you, church, for doing that. That's one of the building blocks of being in friendship is to say, hey, we can put all this together, but at the end of the day, we're happy for you. We're excited for you. And, and I'll just go back to what we're talking about earlier with acceptance. Celebrate the little things, right? Just like a little kid. And, and even, if, even if it's um, our series that we just did with um, Philippians, and we challenged you to go and read the book of Philippians. And I had some people, maybe for the very first time, read an entire book of the Bible. And, and maybe they only did it one time, but you know what? That's awesome, isn't it, church? We want to celebrate that. That's huge. Maybe, maybe you've gone a whole week without having a drop of alcohol or drugs or stay clean for a week. That's awesome. We want to celebrate that, don't we? That's exciting. Maybe you, for the first time ever, prayed out loud in a group. How many of you remember that moment for you've done that before, right? That's pretty cool, right? You're like, yeah, that's awesome. We want to celebrate that together. We want to be excited about that because we live in a world, if I can just say it, we live in a world that are real quick to tear us down, isn't it? We live in a world that's super quick to put us up on a pedestal so they can tear us right down again. And man, what would it look like if we were God's church and we celebrated and, and you were so excited no matter what happened in your life, you were super excited to tell your church family because you know they're going to be excited and they're going to celebrate it too. So we're going to put it back up on the screen. I want us to read this out loud again one more time. This statement that's going to be kind of the foundation principle of our series. Let's read this out loud together. I went out looking for a friend, but none could be found. I went out to be a friend and they were everywhere. Which one are you doing, church? Are you out there looking for friends or are you out there being a friend? And if you don't know the answer to that, I'm going to come back to these building blocks, and we're going to talk through this again. See, are you spending time with people? Are you being intentional with your time? Are, are, are you putting together these microwave relationships? Are you saying, you know what, I'm going to be committed to this. I'm going to be intentional with my time. How about trust? Can I be counted on? Can people rely on me? When I give my word, do I do what I say, even when it hurts, right? That's the part that matters. And are you going to blow that? Absolutely. Do I blow that too? Yeah. And when you find yourself in a situation where you've given your word and you blew it, you know the best thing you can do? You can call that person up and say, listen, I am so sorry I blew that. And then stop talking. <laughs> That's the hard part, right? Because we want to add the, but I was in this and this, that. And Just leave that part out. Just call them and say, listen, I told you this and I blew it and I'm so sorry. That builds trust. And be reliable. Give your word. Be a trustworthy friend. Do you show empathy? Is your favorite topic you? <laughs> and if you're not aware of that, find somebody who loves you, who loves Jesus, and they'll tell you, <laughs> yeah, your favorite topic is you. And walk through that with each other. Be genuinely concerned with other people. And for some of you, empathy is really easy. 
for some of you are very empathetic and I love you and, and I know who you are. For some of us, it's hard. <laughs> and I put myself in that car and I said us. Like, oh, Pastor Jeff, you're so good at it. I had to work at it. <laughs> some of you might say, well, empathy doesn't come naturally to me. Me either, <laughs> okay? We have to work at it. And, and we're called to do that. We need to be empathetic to each other. How about acceptance? Is there somebody in your life that you've written off that you've said, ah, they're too far gone, or I'm not gonna, or, or maybe there's been a damage in the relationship, maybe there's been a hurt or a pain that you need to go back and you need to say, listen, I know there's some stuff that happened between us and I wanna let you know that I'm gonna do everything I can to try to restore this relationship. That's acceptance. I've got people in my life who got my back. I've got people in my life that know no matter what happens, they're going to be there for me. I can't tell you what that means to me in my life because I'm going to tell you I'm a screw up. I tell you this all the time. I, one of the things I struggle with is standing up here knowing that I'm not good enough to stand up here because if there's things in my life that you guys knew about, you'd be like, man, I can't believe they let him pastor. Yeah, me either. But I got people who got my back, who accept me, who stand in the fire with you. And if you don't have that, welcome home. Because there's some people in this church you gotta know. Because they're gonna accept you. But again, acceptance doesn't mean approval. There's some things that we need to change in our life, isn't there? Maybe there's some boundaries we need to put up. Those are okay. You, you know, this isn't in my notes, but it's, it's important. I would love to be a church where we'd be okay saying, you know what, I love this person in Jesus Christ, but they drive me crazy, okay? Can we just be a church that says that? Can we just be a church that says, listen, listen, I, I love this person, I accept them for who they are, but, but really, their personality just drives me nuts, <laughs> okay? And maybe we're just not gonna hang out, we're not gonna hang out and be best friends. We can come on Sunday, we can worship God together, but then we're gonna have our space together. Can we be that church? Are we secure enough in our own faith to know that, that there's just some people we don't get along with? but we're still gonna accept them. You're still part of this church. We, we can be healthy enough to say, listen, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna put some boundaries in place. Can we do that? And can we celebrate? And, and this is so close to my heart because again, I feel like this is something we can do that's really simple, is just to be excited for people. No matter what they're doing, if they pass a test, if they're, they're kids, whatever, I don't care what it is, man. Just be excited for people. When you hear that, just cheer them on. Be, be, be glad, glad for them. Because, again, we live in a world that tries to tear us down. So how you doing with being a friend? I don't know about you, but I'm excited for this series. We're going to bring this block back. I've actually, like I said, you've, some of you have seen this before. I've had this in my office. It's a true story. I actually have this in my office, and I, and I, I look at it almost every day because it sits right by my computer because I need to learn this too. That's why I have it there. And, and the funny part, I'll tell you the, the rest of the story. I actually left it on my desk this morning. I got down here, we got set up, and I went, oh, shoot, I forgot the big visual for the message. I had to run home and get it quick because I had this. But, but I, I believe that we're going to bring this out every week, this series, because this is the, this is the foundation what we're building on. And, and we'll have it here, and you guys can see it as a reminder of what it means to be a real friend. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the real friends that I have in my life. And I'm just going to go back to that verse where you said to accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring God praise. God, there's nothing I've done to earn or deserve your love, but you've given it to us freely. And God, in James, you talk about how with our tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who are made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be so. Forgive my heart. Forgive the heart of every man, woman, and child listening to this message right now for the times that we spoke ill against your children. God, as a parent, nothing frustrates me more than when somebody speaks ill of my children. How much more so should it be with the God of the universe? God, if there's any gossip that's come from our lips this week, convict our hearts right now. If there's phone calls we need to make or text message we need to send, let's do that. Let's get our hearts clean and right and forgive us from that. And God, moving forward, when we're talking about somebody and they're not around, we're going to be lifting them up. We're going to be praising them. God, help us to be intentional with our time 
And, and that's going to be my prayer through the series is that, that we would just make time to be in relationships with each other. We don't have time not to. The days are evil. The world is getting worse, not better. And so we need to be intentional about our friendships with each other in the church and also with those in the world who need to hear your love. God, help us to be more empathetic. God, you are the loving and caring God and help us to give the time and attention to people we need and not to make ourselves the focus, but to make them the focus. And God, help us to celebrate. It's the name of our church. We, we need to just celebrate when things go well and, and, and when people do well and, and whatever those things are, God, it feels good. Help us to honor and value each other. And, and God, I know we're gonna need your help on this because you say where two or three are gathered, you're there. And I think the rest of that verse should say, because you'll need us, <laughs> we'll need you <laughs> to be there. And, and as we stumble and bumble through this, God, help us to really recognize why we're doing it, because you've called us to it. And we love you so much. And we ask this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.